Good afternoon, friends. It is epic to be here at TEDx Wilmington. It's a gift, and I brought you a gift, and we're going to hold on to that gift until the end of the talk, if that's okay with you all. When I was five years old, I knew two things. I was going to join the Navy, and I was going to be a chef. And as a small kid growing up in a smaller town in Ohio, chefs were like ghosts. You knew what they were, but you never saw them. The only chefs I knew about were Julia Child, the French chef, Bon Appetit, and Graham Care, the galloping gourmet. Every one of you in this room and every one of us on this planet is blessed with a gift. And it is your personal responsibility to use that gift. It is an inheritance from the universe that you must share and bless other people with your gift. And in turn, you will receive blessings to the point where you will grow and prosper and roam this planet like the spiritual giant the universe has intended for you to be. Whether your gift is service, be of service to others. If it is in teaching, teach. If it is giving mercy, give it cheerfully. We all have gifts, ladies and gentlemen. How many people in this room here are aware of their gift and are using their gift by show of hands? That's great. Congratulations. For those of you who didn't raise your hands, the good news is it doesn't matter if you're 5, 15, or 50 when you discover your gift. What's important is to discover your gift because we all have gifts to share. And for those people who didn't raise your hands, I have a question. When is the best time to plant a tree? It was 50 years ago. And the second best time is right now. The tiniest of acorn you can plant today and in the future, that little sprout will soar into a massive oak tree, powerful beyond your wildest dreams. We all have this with inside of us. You know, when I was about seven or eight years old, my older brother Doug, three years my senior, had this quote on his bedroom door. It's known as Press On. It was by Calvin Coolidge. I remember reading that as a little kid. That quote affected my life to this very day. And the quote is, Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. The world is full of unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. And education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, always has and always will solve the problems of the human race. I didn't know what persistence was, and I didn't know what omnipotent meant. And I said, Doug, what does that mean? And he gave me Noah not the Bible, Webster. And I looked it up. And little did I know, as an eight-year-old child, I was the personification of persistence. You see, my friends, because two years earlier, I had developed a rare bone disease. And I give a shout-out to the Cleveland Clinic, the best hospital in the world, whose doctors properly diagnosed me with Perthes disease. It's a bone disorder. I was in traction for 12 months of my life, and then after that, I wore a full-length metal brace that kept my left leg immobile. I was ridiculed, handicapped, gimp, hop along. I couldn't do the things that normal little boys could do. I couldn't run or jump or ride my bicycle or play Little League. But it didn't matter because while my leg might have been immobile, 
my mind was engaged. And I began to architect my life because I knew two things. I was going to be a chef and I was going to join the Navy. And at that moment in time, ladies and gentlemen, persistence became as common as salt and pepper and a sharp knife in my repertoire. And my life, my career has been amazing. And armed with nothing more than a diploma from Firelands High School in Oberlin, Ohio, and serving on the U.S. Navy on a submarine, my career has jettisoned me to the Emmy award-winning show, Top Chef, to the Atlantis Resort and Casino, to the Bellagio, and a flotilla of others. Because I was persistent. I joined the Navy, and I cooked on the USS Patrick Henry. I did five patrols. I served the men who served our nation. Submarine sailors are the best fed personnel in all of the armed forces combined. After my honorable discharge from the US Navy, I merely traded in my Navy blues for Chef Whites and continued to use my gift every single day. I moved to New York City and I bit the big apple with everything I had. It was in the 80s, the decade of Gordon Gecko and greed is good and Reaganomics proclaiming that ketchup is a vegetable. <laughs> but we all know that a tomato is a fruit, at least botanically. I was captivated by the glitz and glamour of Gotham. I was always dreaming in the city that never sleeps. And I saw things there that affected me dearly. And another tool that I learned to put my repertoire from my time in Manhattan is to be present. Call it what you want. Situational awareness, being alert, being aware, being in center, receiving all of the universe's signs, synchronicities, and symbols that come to your way every single day that provide an opportunity to use your gift. And during this time in New York City, I would witness these individuals rummaging through the trash to get someone's discarded pizza crust or that last couple drops of soda for their minimum daily requirement. There I was in New York City doing my apprenticeship at the iconic, world-class, five-star Pierre Hotel on Fifth Avenue and 61st Street, the most expensive real estate in the world, where they were charging $35 for a rack of lamb for one person. But yet that poor soul on the street who was relegated to get his dinner out of the trash could have lived off that $35 for a week. All these juxtapositions, they crystallized. And in a moment, there was a maxim that was created, an impersonal imperative that I must use my gift to help others. You know, folks, I have cooked meals that cost people $5,000 a head. I have cooked for people as little as a dollar a day. I fed Guatemalan refugees spring rolls in the rainforest. I've been to South Africa with a contingent of 160 chefs from 30 nations feeding the down and out in Soweto and raising awareness about the plight of hunger and raising funds for the two biggest charities in South Africa. I fed Bill Clinton Kobe beef and foie gras at the Bellagio. I cooked for Carlos Santana on my birthday at Jazz Fest in New Orleans, dishing up the crawfish etouffee. And here comes Carlos. I said, hey, Carlos, it's my birthday. Happy birthday. How you doing? I'm blessed. Whoa. His spirituality hit me with the intensity of a ghost pepper. 
to this day, I'm in awe of meeting that man and, and standing in awe of his greatness. You know, my last vacation, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't at some sandy beach in the Caribbean. I didn't go rock the Casbah in Morocco. I bought a round-trip ticket from DFW for a 13-hour jet ride to Manila, Philippines, where I fed 400 little ones. They call them dumpster kids because that's where they exist. South Africa, Guatemala, the Philippines. When I go to these countries and see these wretched conditions, it still strengthens my persistence. It builds my resolve, and I continue my commitment to change the world. When I see these little children and their smiles and their eyes light up because they've been fed, I know that this small change, in fact, could mushroom and change the world. You know, somebody once said that the people who are crazy enough, who think they can change the world, are the ones who do. So I invite every one of you in this room to get on board the crazy train. <laughs> All you need as a briefcase of persistence and a suitcase of presence and your gift. What does it all mean, Bill Clinton and the dumpster kids, Carlos Santana and South Africa, Guatemalan refugees and the Atlantis? Food. Food, my friends, is the great equalizer. It is the single common thread that weaves an anthropological tapestry that blankets the global village. You know, I am fascinated by empires of the ancient world. I love history. I love how it's such a great teacher. And I remain captivated by the holy Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, no relation. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I thought I was pretty cool. There was an empire named after me. Because there was no Doug or Dave or Paul Empire, but there was an Ottoman Empire. The British Empire. America is an empire. We are an empire of influence. Did you know that California alone can feed this great nation? And America, in turn, can feed the world. I've been given many opportunities to share my gift. And as such, the latest thing I'm working on is a thing called Feast feed every American starting today. This is a vision I have, an assignment, a personal obligation, a social responsibility to enact this feast. And what this is, ladies and gentlemen, is an opportunity to arrange 50 chefs, one from every state, to go on the White House lawn and to create an American regional feast and feed needy children and simultaneously engage every governor at every mansion and every mayor in every small town on October 16th, World Food Day, to create this feast. Because we are an empire of influence. And America's supremacy does not lay in its might, but it rests in its mercy. And if we are to maintain our sense of relevancy, if we are to sustain ourselves as the superpower, we must conquer with compassion and not dominate with destruction. And one day, ladies and gentlemen, I envision this empire of influence to export this idea to every head of state, whereas that leader of that nation will be serving the people 
be feeding the people he was elected to serve at their official residence. That is an empire I want to become a citizen of. That is an empire I can be proud of. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion here, we have a gift. And I wouldn't be a very good chef if I didn't bring for you something to eat. So it's not so much what's in there to eat, but the message that's inside. So go ahead, folks, and feel free to open up your Chinese takeout box there. And inside there, ladies and gentlemen, is a handcrafted Belgian chocolate fortune cookie. Wow, says somebody. And what does that fortune say there? The present is you. Share your gift. Be the one who is persistent. Be the one who is present. Be the one who uses your gift. Thank you.